Welcome to watch this two-part series of video demonstrations focusing on semantics and universal automation, especially, especially uh, software development automation based on semantic information. My name is Kalle Launiala and I'm the inventor of the methodology that's been demonstrated here. This video demonstration is divided in two parts. First part is focusing on semantics of information uh, as an universal model. It's really easy once you get it and get the universal way of managing and dealing with information. Until you get it, it's uh, really difficult. I'd compare it with the distributed architectures for those who are familiar with them. Really simple when you get it, but quite difficult until you do. The second part is focusing on automation demonstration for Visual Studio Team System and in particular Team Foundation Server part of it. That's a project management or application lifecycle management system and it's used for a concrete example of integrating the real information from the development process. All the content including the slides in the videos and demonstrations to download are available through through the abstractiondev.wordpress.com So semantics from the real world Data values without any meaning are just noise If you see a uh, data that looks like uh, date time it can very well, very well be a date time but until you do what the date time is about you cannot use it in any kind of program logic so, in real world, the programs give implicit semantics by naming variables and methods because implicit semantics are valid within programs context. Semantics are basically everywhere when the data is manipulated because the program cannot really manipulate the data if it's just noise and has no meaning. Next will follow a series of demonstrations starting from data with no semantics at all and growing bit by bit in a functional code showing how semantics grow implicitly ending up in a method structure where actual semantical signature can be recognized. So, the conclusion of the demonstration data becomes information only after strict semantics and it's worth notion that semantic context may overlap with each other so single bit of data can be part of multiple of intersecting and independent semantics it's easiest to understand that if you have a data in the database and multiple applications are accessing it they have a usually same semantics but sometimes if the application is modernized to a different platform, the newer application can actually have more specific semantics than the older one had on the same data. Then there is uh, operational semantics that uh, can be identified by the semantic signature with namespace, class and method and including the uh, parameters and the return value of the logical signature. This is how the compiler can uh, distinct two different methods but they can also be used in a way to identify semantically uh, unique methods so universally there is only semantical information that is certain data and the manipulation of it semantic information identification is the beginning beginning of realizing that there is a uh, only certain information in the process. So within a documentation or design and implementation level there is basically the same information in the design and implementation process. Same thing applies for the so full software project scope where the specification level usually is the master that dictates the whole process and the project management is again based on the facts that happen in the process. So the solution is to recognize the information, the unique information in the process 
and recognize the role that's meant to provide it. This is the key for decision making. And notice that the same person can act in multiple roles, but when you realize the roles, you can easily separate your whole team's roles in the process properly. Note also that the similar lookalike information might still be different. Use cases are not as is logical business operations. So, in a semantical controlled fashion, we can actually have an agree on unique unified model where all the parties enter the information, then it's, uh, it's automated uh, in the final target information models, such as, as pure code or Word documentation. Of course, each role can still provide it manually, but the more we automate, the more power we get from the semi semantically controlled information. However, we can do even better. Why would all the roles have to see and understand the whole semantical package when they only want to deal with their own context? After all, it's all semantically clearly defined information. IT, on the other hand, is all about automatic management of information. So, we can indeed automate it further. Introducing role-specific semantical models in between the full model and automated transformation between the models, we get a uh, really good experience for each of their roles to speak their own language of the process that they currently use to, and therefore be as productive as they are, even though their work is minimized. Example demonstration is a change request package that is further on the other demonstration so to deploy to the Team Foundation server. However, minimizing the information from the semantical context of the provider size makes it really easy to enter and edit and contribute to the process. Next, the demonstration for the change request form filling in the process. Wrap up conclusion of this. There is only semantic data and operations against it. ADM as an innovation makes it possible to raise abstraction level of software development or any other usually textual information as clearly defined semantical information. Semantic signatures can be constructed from fixed form of data or operations and they as is became interchangeable within the application or system. Thank you for this. More to follow on the part two where we concretely demonstrate on Team Foundation server functionality.